is a story that begins in any part of America, wherever you may be. It's a story that begins at your front door, on the street where you live, in your town or village or city, somewhere in America. Or say your place called home is a ranch, kind of spread out in the sun's warm blessing, or snuggled close in a soft, snow-white blanket, or a farm whose front yard is a golden field of flowers, or maybe your home's in the city, where you go at the end of a work-ridden day to be alone in one room in the midst of the city's teeming millions. Well, it's your story all the same, and it begins in any part of the land, for there and from there, and stretching out in all directions are ways and byways and roads and trails and paths enchanted that lead to the wonderful pages of a storybook filled with the glorious living pictures that tell the story of America the beautiful. Look around over the land. Take a fellow up in North Dakota. Likely as not, he's working a field all through the long day or minding business with the rains growing moist in the palms of his hands and thinking he'd like to go off somewheres on a trip and watch the ocean. And all the time, he's square in the middle of an ocean of amber grain. And all he's got to do is look around. He'll see beauty right beneath his eye. Beauty? A man would need the words of poets to describe the scenes of harvest time. Yet all the while he looks and thinks of other sights, his thoughts go wandering from his field of grain the grains of sandy beach all along the coast of Maine, where the riches are in the sea. And folks here are apt to turn away to think of beauty someplace else and look to the west, to where the tall timber grows. Well, it's just where you're looking at the time. America doesn't mind which direction you favor, north or south, east or west. It doesn't really matter. If you favor the lumber country, there's enough timber to make a person gasp at nature's bounty. Now, about mountains. We've got some big ones, if mountains are what you're after. Pikes Peak, for example standing at the end of the Great Plains, marking the southern range of the Rockies, where golden flowers make a burnished carpet to the snow-clad peaks beyond. And Mount Hood up in Oregon, lofty, majestic. Mount Whitney, there's a giant of a mountain, 14,496 feet high, snow-crowned patriarch, highest land in the United States, and 80 miles away, just that far is Death Valley, lowest land in our country. From the snow and mist-shrouded crags of Whitney, 80 miles to this, heat and barren waste, and the sun-bleached bones of those who sought to solve the riddle of its hidden riches. Yes, aptly named Death Valley. Beautiful America, Keep moving across the desert. Follow the wagon ruts of the old pioneer trains. See the endless vistas of tableland. Watch the sun set in the stillness of earth and sky. See where the west was won. You want land? You're looking around? Help yourself to a million acres of America the Beautiful. Now, how about rivers? You like rivers? Well, the rivers that flow through our land are the arteries that brought life and strength to the body of a new nation. Even their names are beautiful. The Wabash, the Tennessee, the Columbia, the Colorado, the Cimarron, the Atchafalaya, Ohio, and the Mississippi. Mark Twain told the stories of our rivers, caught their mood and majesty, their laughter and wisdom, translated the powerful threshing of paddle wheels, the billowing smokestacks, and the resonant whistle 
into a cadence that thrilled to the meaning of steamboat round the bend. But water, shucks. You got to see our lakes to know how big water is. Up around our northern boundary, we have the Great Lakes. Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie, and Lake Ontario. Inland oceans. Remember all that wheat? Well, it gets on a boat at the Great Lakes, and iron and copper and lumber, too. A thousand other things from the earth, on boats, strung from one end of the five Great Lakes to the other. Giant waterways, bringing produce and products to America. But they figure those lakes are not more than a drop in the Pacific Ocean out on the West Coast. A San Francisco booster will tell you they had likely put a bridge over those lakes, like the Bay Bridge here, a highway in the air from San Francisco to Oakland which leads on down the surf-washed coast and shore in a mighty fine stretch where a few million sun-kissed people will tell you that this is beautiful America. So it just depends on which way you're looking. Maybe you're looking at a pool in the city and remembering your favorite swimming hole in the country. It makes no difference wherever you look. It's still the same beautiful America. An America easily reached by simple country roads by city highways that are miracles of engineering and design. What next? Well, much of the wealth and beauty that lies within these borders has been pointed out and set aside and labeled for all to enjoy. So we read Howell National Forest, and we go there for a trip or the vacations we used to have. And we thank a nation that has preserved these wonders for us to behold. Scenic attractions unexcelled, in fantastic design and brilliant display. Well, how about Yellowstone? When you've run out of words, go up to the Buffalo Bill country and give Yellowstone a once over. The oldest national park in our history. What artist can capture the sheer blue loveliness of the morning glory pool? And from this delight of matchless color, captured in the liquid blue below, you find dramatic contrasts as you stand a marvel at this vast mountain surrounded plateau, high in the Rockies, where rise the head streams of rivers that flow to the Atlantic and the Pacific. A volcanic, lava laden land, home of geysers rushing plumes of white waters, born in a turbulent labyrinth far below the surface of the earth, where old faithful reign supreme, the greatest single attraction of all the many wonders to behold. Then there's Sequoia National Park, where the big trees grow. What living thing on earth is older? These giants were standing 3,000 years before the birth of Christ. Behold them, and wonder at what they have seen. Tremendous sentinels, whose mighty trunks have grown massive with the secret of the ages. Patriarchs, older than the pyramids, and the redwood trees that reach in brilliant dignity like columns to support the sky. These trees are also in nearby Yosemite. But here the region's fame is centered in the spectacular beauty of its waterfalls, among the highest to be found dropping 2,500 feet in three thundering cascades, while the fine spray creates the rainbow spectrum to enchant the eye. But falls, did you say? What about Niagara? There's a cataract for you. But water's grandeur can be matched by stone in Colorado. The garden of the gods, cathedrals etched in rock by the architect of ages. Put a Bryce Canyon for vivid coloring, brilliant hues, and unusual fantastic formations. In New Mexico, it's the Carlsbad Caverns National Park. Those awe-inspiring openings carved in massive rock by an inland ocean 200 million years ago. Fantastic underground formations, hanging like icicles, formed by the oozing drip of water through the centuries. 
and the fabulous Rocky Mountains, famous range of picturesque contrasts, sun-drenched valleys, and snow-dipped slopes where skiing, winter sport, is in season in July, where the crisp mountain air resounds with sparkling, healthy laughter, where wildlife flourishes, protected in these national parks, living museums of natural history, where even the timid woodchuck approaches unafraid to nibble tidbits from the friendly hand. In Montana, it's the Glacier National Park, rugged mountains of unsurpassed alpine character, abundant in lakes of romantic beauty, the waters fed by icy glaciers moving timelessly down the mountain slopes. In Utah, Zion National Park, magnificent in coloring, in unusual rock formations carved by the master hands of time and nature. The record of a billion years incorporated in that regal mass of rock so aptly named the Great White Throne. And the Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming, lofty uplift of mountainous grandeur. Bold, prominent peaks and sheer precipices capped by perennial snow. Say, you can't see them all. You can't even tell about them, not in this lifetime. America the beautiful goes on and on and on being beautiful. But look around you, wherever you are. You don't need a lake or a mountain or a desert or even a national park for beauty. The things we've built in America are beautiful too. Like the tall buildings in our cities, steel and stone rising high in the sky, monuments to the workers of America. And the cities themselves, the streets and streetcars and automobiles, millions of men and women who go up in the tall buildings in a busy, working America. And the mills and the factories in and around our cities, working round the clock to support the nation with the wealth of America's natural resources. The blasting red heat of the furnaces that never cool, molten ore pouring from the huge crucibles, to meet the unrelenting need for steel with a fiery tide of flaming metal for production surpassing all expectations. The vast and complicated job being performed with American efficiency, meeting the greatest challenge of our history in an achievement glowing with the fire of accomplishment. Born in cauldrons, in settings gleaming with the flames of a Dante's Inferno, as liquid iron flows that men may live to build a better world. The tremendous energy of America, rolling out of fire and water, giving temper to the metal, pouring out the hissing stream on a never-ending flow of material, unequaled for its quality, unabated in its quantity. The sharp pounding of steel on steel, blended with the rhythm and the clatter of machinery, making more machines, exhaling the cloudy smoke of creation, Production, that's the front line here at home. The men with their know-how and their energy, and the women who came to work beside the men to fight the battle we all fought to keep America beautiful. Beautiful, what does the word really mean? Well, out in Texas, a rancher thinks his bald-faced steers are mighty pretty. And a rancher over in Montana will challenge you to name a finer sight than a good horse growing up in a good country. Around in Idaho, a flock of grazing sheep makes a scene to delight the eye. In Oregon, they shine up to a crop of big red apples. Yes, the word beautiful has a meaning all its own wherever you may look. And in every part of America, you'll find beautiful defined differently. Well, the dictionary says, having the qualities which constitute beauty. So look around, American. Look at the kids playing baseball. There's quality for you. Think about typical things like hot dogs and going to the movies. American ways and American things to do. American as a rip-roaring rodeo with real cowboys, buck and horses, camp roping the color and spirit of the old Wild West captured in an arena. Say, ever been to Coney Island? Well, help yourself to a large slice of Americana. 
nothing else like it. Shoot the shoots and merry-go-rounds and all the other devices. And a hundred thousand people like you out to have fun in the world's greatest playground. But all these people, many who have come from other nations and are now, by the process of our great melting pot and the goddess of liberty, Americans like yourself. All these people must remember that the beauty of America is the quality of its beauty. Our leaders of the past, when that little band of patriots signed the Declaration of Independence, they knew little of the beauties of the continent on which they stood. The Great Lakes, gold in California, oil in Pennsylvania, Detroit, Chicago, the Grand Canyon, never heard of them. They never imagined such things or such places. They only knew there were 13 states and these states needed to be made beautiful. So they gave them liberty. And later and through the years, as more and more of the land of America was found and settled, men and women kept right on choosing to fight and to die to keep America beautiful. And so, today, this is the land we own, the United States of America. To manage this rich estate is our responsibility to pass it on to Americans yet unborn, stronger, finer, fairer than it was when it came to us. Four things we must do now. Produce, so there will be food and goods and jobs, enough for all. We must conserve for even this great land can be ruined if we waste its riches. We must share our blessings with those who need and deserve them. And we must save for the future security of ourselves and our loved ones. If we are thrifty, the nation will thrive and each of us will be happier and more secure. That is why the United States Treasury, our Treasury, says to each one of us, save regularly. Put your savings into United States savings bonds, the safest investment on earth, and hold on to your bonds for the future. They are your shares in America. America is beautiful. America is strong. It's up to us to keep it so. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of green, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. O oh, beautiful for pilgrim feet, whose stern impassioned stress, a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the wilderness. America, America, God mend thine every flaw, confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. O oh, beautiful for patriot dream that sees beyond the years, Thine alabaster cities gleam, undimmed by human tears.